All right, this is the area that was originally um, a combination of various turf grasses and um, really poor soils that has been planted with uh, drought tolerant species, which is really critical for this area, as well as um, it will be seeded in the fall with three pounds of well, three pounds plus of native wildflower seeds that can handle full sun. And we've planted some cultivars of native plants like this uh, dwarf magnolia and these filberts, two filbert trees. I took a hit from um, some caterpillars, which I addressed with an organic. This whole thing is being treated organically. We have over here sage. I think I showed you that before. Um, down there is winterberry. That will provide berries to feed um, bird species such as the cedar waxwing that overwinter here. So little red berries will be present on those shrubs. There's some more of those up there, at the top, as well as holly. Those will also provide berries for birds like the waxwing. And I don't know if you can see, but a lot of the bare ground, if you saw the earlier uh, video, has started to be populated by these grasses. So sprayed these another time, cut and sprayed with another organic herbicide, and then going to um, spread out some suffocating mulch, seed it, and then I can't wait to show what's happening next year. I left a few of the blackberry vines that are present. We have buttonbush there. That's going to be terrific for pollinators. Another buttonbush. Lots of, um, actually five of my milkweeds just disappeared. Like somebody cut them down. I don't know what happened to them. But we have milkweeds here. And then um, the goldenrod. And then some cultivars up top, including abelia, which is nice because that provides year-long flowers for pollinators, nine bark, uh, and then one of my favorite additions over here. Um, I will post the soil results before and after treatment soon. I keep saying I'm going to do that. I will do it. I will follow through. I just haven't done that. Look at that cosmos there. Fancy pants. And let's see, okay. And then we've got Pieris, love that. Little bit of damage from transplant, but it's gonna be fine. The new growth is nice and green. Uh, the irrigation system that was put in is um, gonna be fine. It's not what I would have done. I would have done a drip irrigation system, especially now with extended drought periods. I have a couple of clients who are talking about how much money they've spent on utilities and water. I've never spent so much as this year, and that's because we've had a lot of dry, hot. And so they are having to water gardens they never had to water before. And we have here um, Devil's Walking Stick, really fun plant. It's going to be providing some terrific late summer flowers for pollination, and then those berries for overwintering birds. Uh, there's a bird, bluebird house up there. It's already got a resident. That's kind of exciting. And then we've got, um, I think I put in one, two, three, four, five, six, eight of these elderberries, two different um, species, but these will also be beautiful late summer bloomers. Um, you can see there's a sulfur winged butterfly right there. Woo! Love to see those. I've seen so many butterflies in this habitat now. I'm so thrilled because there was nothing. All right, anyway, the elderberry, as you can imagine, it's the same elderberry people, Sambucas, that people take as a medicinal. And um, so the birds certainly enjoy it as well. More goldenrod, some more um, milkweed, and then zinnias, and a few other plants that are including the um, rosemary. That are not native but will provide will be drought tolerant provide nice um, erosion control to this ridge and are not invasive all right so 
think that's quite the change. <laughs>